Okay, we're here uh, taking a look at the suction carburetors, and actually I've got three styles here. Uh, these are all suction carburetors. They suck the fluid up, or the gas up out of the tank. Uh, some of them have two tubes, some have one tube, and actually this one did have two at one point, and it's just missing. Um, and it drops it down into a reservoir and then actually picks it back up through the small tube here and actually pulls it in through the carburetor uh, to be used in the engine. But also with every one of these, they have a diaphragm assist. Uh, the diaphragm can assist in the pumping of the fuel from the tank as well as operate the choke. These two here will operate the choke. This has a manual choke. I'm going to start out with this style, so we'll push the, those two aside. Uh, first, to disassemble this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and again, like we did on the float bullet carburetors, we're going to count our settings. Now, this is a main needle valve, so I'm going to go ahead. Here's half, one, half, two, about two and a quarter, okay? When putting these main needle valves in, they should be one and a quarter to one and a half out, according to manufacturer specs, uh, to generally get it started. But like we stated before, if I can't get it started using that setting, then I go to the setting that it was before I assembled. A lot of times these get adjusted to compensate for some problems because of a dirty carburetor and so forth. So a lot of times you're going to find that they're not necessarily at the correct setting. Okay, so we pull it out. Here's our needle spring. Again, we have the brass washer. Come on off of there. And we have the O-ring that is still part of it. And you can tell these haven't been apart. Okay, now we'll go ahead and pull the jet out itself. And this is actually a, more of a housing. And we have a fiber washer there. So there's the order. Now, behind this, I have a brass jet and I want to find a bladed screwdriver that has a good tip, but I also want to make sure that whatever screwdriver I'm using, and I did have a blue handled screwdriver that the sides were shaved down because we don't want it to actually hit the threads inside here. If it's hitting the threads, you're damaging the threads where we've got to pull this main jet right across. Okay, and so I'll back this out. And here's our main jet, and it's got one simple hole, okay, and the uh, needle, basically the distance out will control amount, how much fuel can actually flow through it. Now if you look inside here, you'll notice that there's actually two holes, one larger than the other, okay. The larger is your main, which is going right to the venturi. The smaller is the idle port, which is basically going to your throttle plate. Okay, uh, and so thus the two different sizes that we have for holes in it. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over here, and hopefully this one will fit. We'll go ahead, remove these five small screws here. And behind this plate, we have the diaphragm fuel pump. This suction carburetor actually has a diaphragm fuel pump, so it's got a, a small diaphragm in it, and it's got a small spring to help operate the fuel pump. Okay, and sometimes you've got to strategically get a screwdriver, basically to pop the seal here, and you have a tension pin here, which is basically kind of a, a spring-loaded uh, pin that pulls outward. Now here's our diaphragm, okay, and so I'm going to carefully kind of peel this off without trying to destroy it. Now this diaphragm actually feels relatively new. It's pretty soft. It should not be brittle, okay? If you hold it up to the light, which I'm doing, okay, you should not be able to see any daylight or small pinholes through it, but if it's brittle, stiff, 
it should be replaced. It should be nice, soft, and pliable, and feel like rubber. This one is actually pretty decent. Okay. Behind it, we have the spring, and we have a uh, finish washer that goes over the spring to prevent the spring from being able to puncture the diaphragm. And then what we have here is we have two ports. Okay. This tube comes up, and the fuel comes out here, and basically fills the cavity, and then it's uh, able to be pushed on through this uh, port here, okay, into, basically into the carburetor. This is our vacuum port, which is the operating right off of the intake pulse, uh, which is flexing that diaphragm to pump the fuel back and forth, okay. On the diaphragm here, you have two one-way valves, okay, so one will open, it fills the cavity. When the cavity wants to shrink, it closes that valve, opens the other valve, and vice versa. And that's how we basically are able to push the fuel on. On this style carburetor, this brass tube here is part of the carburetor. So if this brass tube gets damaged, you've got to replace the carburetor. These plastic portions can be replaced. They're extremely difficult to put on. It requires uh, basically using a, a lighter to get just a small amount of heat and being very precise with pressing it on with the use of a vise. Uh, it's not easy to do, um, and I'm sure your instructor will have to be helping you on that. Okay? Um, but if this brass tube does get damaged, it's replaced the whole carburetor. And again, check the, the wear. At this point, this carburetor would be ready to go into the parts washer uh, and be cleaned before you would put it back together, blow through all the different passageways to make sure that it's, uh, you can blow through all the different passageways. And as long as the diaphragm and all the passageways are, are clear and we don't have excessive wear at the throttle plate, uh, this carburetor should work just fine. So we'll go ahead and throw this one back together real quick here. If you want to. So I simply put in the jet. We'll go ahead fiber washer and the uh, needle housing. And again, we'll go snug with that. Get my spring needle brass washer assembled. O-ring pushed on. And we'll go ahead and thread this one in. And so I will bottom it out we stated before. I don't wrench on it. If I wrench on it, I actually damage the needle. There it bottomed out. There's half, one, half. Should be good enough to go ahead and get started. We'll put our diaphragm spring in. We can throw our diaphragm back on. Match the tension pin and our holes basically placements place the plate. And by the way, when you're cleaning the parts, also clean the cap here. There is passageways through the cap itself. And we can put the five screws back in. We'll get those screws tightened up. We'll push that one aside. And I'm going to show you the differences on this particular style. This is typically off of a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower. Uh, these are typically found on the cheaper engines. They're not used as much anymore. Um, but what you've got is we've got a simple O-ring and I simply take a small screwdriver, paper clip, and I get behind, that screwdriver is a little damaged, I basically just get behind the O-ring and I should be able to pull it in towards the center and I can basically take it out. Uh, if you get a complete gasket set, that O-ring normally does come in the gasket set. Um, this one does not have a threaded um, main jet. It actually has a rubber washer with a dome-shaped steel washer over the top that's causing it to expand out. How we remove these is I'm simply going to go ahead check my setting on it. So we'll go ahead half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, Four, four and a half, five, 
five and a half, and just under six, okay, is where it was. This one, being I took this out of the back room, likely wasn't. Now what I'm doing here is I'm backing it out to where I can get a good solid grip. And all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to just go and pull. Make sure that when you pull, okay, and you're going to pull this plastic, okay, which is the jet itself, okay, so there's the jet. Let me get this off of the needle here. All right, we have the rubber washer. Here's the steel washer, which is kind of a dome shape, the spring, and there's our needle. Okay, we pulled the whole assembly out. There is, sometimes, there, actually there is, normally behind this plastic, another small O-ring down inside, so I'll use my paper clip to simply pull that O-ring out. So this is the whole assembly that I have here. Now the only other thing that I have to this one is a clip that is holding the diaphragm to the carburetor and I simply take a quarter inch nut driver here or a small screwdriver depending on what you have and we'll back out this here and I take the side cover plate simple gasket um, right here this gasket does not come in the uh, gasket set of the engine um, and then all we've got to do is pull this rod out and that disengages the diaphragm this diaphragm is very brittle and actually bonded to it and so I can simply pull it the rod through the hole okay and so there's our diaphragm what fell out is we have the spring in the uh, fender or fiber not fiber uh, finish washer that is behind operating the, the pump as well okay now what I've got here is so that you can see is I've got a brand new diaphragm. Okay, so here's a brand new diaphragm, real nice and soft. What was missing off of this one is a spring. Okay, and the spring should actually be attached. And what you do is we simply just got to kind of get our fingers right behind it, like I've got here, so that when I push on it, I'm actually going to kind of compress the spring onto it so you can see that I've got that spring basically attached. This is how it should be when we're on. Okay. Now we're just going to go ahead and put it back together with the old and so if I had a new diaphragm all I do is simply reverse the order, attach the rod back onto the choke and we can put our cover back, gasket back, got to get it turned the right direction Oops, I'll put it upside down and we can put our screw back in, okay, and here I simply just take the O-ring, drop the O-ring down, okay, I will go ahead, match the flat to the flat on the inside, I push that all the way down, okay, I will go ahead, put the push the rubber over, set my steel over and now I just simply go ahead and I need to kind of push through the rubber to get down to the plastic and get threaded into the plastic and now I can go ahead screw that in bottom it out and again this one should be at inch and a, or one and a quarter to one and a half turns out for the preliminary setting okay so we'll go ahead all right bottom half one half all right and what I didn't do is and I can peel that up and there I get that in and so now we've got it and basically now I can go ahead and mount this on the top of the gas tank and we'll also go ahead and put the o-ring back in for when I go to slide it on and I simply kind of compress that get it fits into its groove like I did there okay now this is a very similar one uh, to what that one was and this one has the hex and so just like before I deal with this the same otherwise these two carburetors are exactly the